Good morning and welcome to the Automation Morning Show for Friday, September 8th, 2023. I hope your day's off to a great start. Happy Friday, everybody. My name is Sean Tierney from the Automation Blog and School, and this is the show where I cover what's new and exciting in industrial automation. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, we'll start first with a thank you to our sponsor who makes this episode possible, theautomationschool.com. If you know anybody who needs PLC, HMI, or SCADA training, please send them over to theautomationschool.com. From there, we go over to a press release from Honeywell. I thought this was very interesting. Honeywell leverages quantum computing encryption keys to bolster utilities data security against cyber threats. So um, what I thought was interesting is they, and I'll just quote this, by integrating Quantinum's quantum computing hardened encryption technology into their smart meters, they've advanced data security for customers and so on. And so um, what this comes down to is the uh, quantum computing company is able to provide them with a really richly randomized key. So it's just not some, um, you know, weak randomization that could be uh, could be figured out. And um, I just thought it was very interesting. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. From there, we'll go over to uh, Profi News. And they have uh, the new, a new story about working with um, this company called, or this alliance called Moiti. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, very interesting. So I think we're all familiar with IO-Link, right? It's been out for many, many years. We covered it often on the show. But Moiti, I didn't know anything about them. Apparently, they're a software-based, low-power, wide-area network protocol for wireless, wireless applications where you have to query a large number of like IoT devices over a large distance, like let's say in a building system or on a campus. And so what they're doing is they're going to work with the IO-Link folks to uh, make their systems compatible. Now, when you think of IO-Link Wireless, right, we're thinking, and we've had companies like Cortigo on the podcast before. I'll include a link. I, don't, I didn't bring them up, but I'll include a link to that podcast if you want to see about that. They're actually supplying the chipsets to a lot of the big vendors who are integrating IO-Link Wireless into their devices. But back to IO-Link Wireless, if you, if you think about it, it's deterministic because we're using it in our control systems, right? Um, but not every application is a control system. A lot of times it'll be a monitoring system, right? You just want to look at the values of sensors out in the field for like maybe builder, building management or building monitoring or just monitoring in general, condition monitoring. And so Moiti, um, they're non-deterministic, but they're long range and low power, right? And so that can be excellent. And you know, one of the ways that they, they uh, work so well is they tr transmit the data multiple times at multiple frequencies, right? Just to make sure it can get through to where it needs to go. So I thought this was a very interesting article from the folks over at Profi News, and I'm excited to see uh, more products and, and, uh, and companies support this uh, Moiti wireless standard. So from there, let's go over to uh, the new Profinet products for September. Yesterday, we looked at the new IOLink products. Today, we're looking at the new Profinet products, and many of these we've already covered, right? So the first one up is the CPX AP-A system from Festo, which I believe we covered just yesterday, right? And uh, it does come with a Profinet option, uh, you know, a communication module there. So uh, the next one we have are, um, and I haven't seen anything from Parker in a while, is the Parker Hannafin AC drives now coming with Profinet as standard. Now, these are the AC15 and AC20 drives. The... Um, kind of in between the AC10 and AC30 lines that they already have existing. So I'm not, I would love to get somebody on from Parker to talk about their drives, but um, in any case, congratulations. And then this one, of course, we saw this, this was from Beckoff. We talked about their Ethernet APL communication module coming out soon and uh, for hazardous locations. Um, and uh, this is their ELX 6233, right? The blue communication module. Um, next, we have a new gigabit Ethernet switch with AVB and TSN support. So this is uh, from a company, Microchip Technology, and it's their LAN 9662 gigabit ethernet switch, four ports, and uh, it's great for video, audio video bridging, time-sensitive networking. It uh, has two integrated 10, 100, 1000 base T connections. And um, 
It also supports uh, OPC UA and Profinet. And lastly, we have a new, uh, what is this? A new servo from, servo drive from uh, Siemens. It's the Cinematics S200 servo. And uh, I really love to get someone from Siemens on to talk about this. I've traded emails with some people, but it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So if anybody's listening from Siemens, love to have you on the technology show to talk about this new servo. I think you guys also got a new drive out too. Love to talk about that. But in any case, of course, being a new server from Siemens, it's going to have Profinet, right? So from there, we go over to a new product from Balif. And this is um, this is an, uh, a really uh, interesting new product. It's a software product. And it's called the Guided Changeover uh, Studio or software. And, um, you know, it helps improve OEE. But it uh, what it does is it gives you step-by-step -step instructions when you need to do a changeover. And this video was actually pretty good. It has some music to it. And uh, they just show you kind of like, look, if you're going to do a changeover from making one product to making another, typically there's a lot of things you got to do, right? And it, there's always the risk of contamination if it's food or bev. But in any case, um, a lot of times you need to step through a process. And so, I mean, a lot of people make software to do that, right? But I think the key here with the Balif solution is they can actually tie it into their sensors, right? To validate if you've done it correctly. So the software not only runs you through the steps you need to do for the changeover, but it double checks you by looking at the values of the sensors. So I thought that was really interesting. From there, we go over to our featured product of today, and that is my PLC and uh, PLC cost bundle. We'll just call it that. And this has the my MicroLogix cost and my Micro 800 cost in it. And uh, these are both the extended editions, so they come with the next cost for free. And um, the reason I like this course is for people who are just getting started with PLCs, right? The PLC basics in that I start from scratch. Like you're an electrician, a technician, you don't know what a PLC is. And I go through and I teach lot of logic, I teach scan times. And um, the great thing is the Micrologix 1000 and 1100, which you can get used typically under 150 bucks. There's free software for that. Plus Rockwell also makes the emulator free, right? So you can learn the, really learn in the PLC 56500 Micrologix all with free software, which is really cool. And then by bundling that with the Micro 800 course I do, you then get to look at a totally another uh, PLC that has a totally different look and feel, right? By default, it has more of an IEC 61131-3 look, and uh, which I think is good because you're kind of learning the standard now, right? Instead of learning Rockwell, you're learning the standard and uh, can be very helpful when you go to use other people's PLCs, right? And the thing there is the software is also free. Those PLCs new are inexpensive. The software is free. And now it also has a simulator built in. So you don't have to really buy any hardware. You can just get this cost, get the free software, and go through both, learning both PLCs. The other thing about the Micro 800, it does have uh, function blocks, a sequential function chart, not sequential function chart, structured text. And I do cover those in that course as well. So you can go through all three languages. So, uh, and I even have a couple of lessons in there on the Panel View 800. Um, but in any case, uh, you get all that for 179 lifetime access support, and you get the new courses, the ultimate courses, totally free. So um, in any case, and if you if you need to get this for your people, I mean, if you do three or more, there is a discount with our group enrollment program. So with that, let's move on to the next news item, and this is a new product from Turk. Now, I haven't seen much from Turk in a while. Um, I do follow several of their web pages to see, looking for new stuff, and I think the last one was months ago. It was some RFID product for forklifts. Um, but in any case, hey, they're announcing a new high-resolution Profinet absolute encoder. And this looks like a really cool product if you're using Profinet. Now, um, as far as resolution, the single turn has 19-bit resolution. The uh, multi-turn has 24-bit resolution. And these also support media redundancy protocol, link layer discovery protocol, and simple network management protocol. Okay, so those are important things too. And uh, just for you Siemens folks, um, it does support IRT. So you can get down to as fast as 250 microseconds, microsecond updates. So that's really important, right? If you have a high-speed application. So uh, that, and they also have a new video to go with this. It's what they call their walk and talk videos, which I enjoy. I don't know why, but just the, the product managers just walking around talking about the product. I thought it was pretty cool. So um, I will link to that as well. Uh, from there, we go over to... Uh, Turk is talking about their new line of Ethernet cord sets. So they have RJ45, they have M12, they have M8. And uh, these are based on Cat5e, okay? 
So we're looking at 100 megabits right now, uh, max speed. And the series is the 4422 series from Turk. And, um, you know, they've been totally certified to use with Profinet, EtherCAT, Ethernet IP, and Modbus TCP. So the big four Ethernet uh, field buses, right? And, um, yeah, congratulations on the new uh, cord sets, uh, Turk. I mean, a lot of people use their cord sets. They're one of the favorites out there in industry. From there, we go over to the final new product from Turk, all at once, right? All on a Friday morning. Um, these are updated power supplies for their popular uh, XCOM IO system. So these work with all the existing uh, modules and, and, and XCOM uh, devices out there. But these have been upgraded to provide more uh, features and diagnostics for IO, IIoT systems. So a lot more diagnostics uh, information is now available. So if you are using the XCOM IO system, definitely check these out. You may be better buying these and getting more information than buying the previous models. And uh, now we go over to uh, articles and uh, we have a new one from Cognix and uh, they usually have great articles, right? And this one is no exception. This goes, this is a deep dive into QR codes, right? So really, I mean, you could kind of call this one-stop shopping for understanding what a QR code is. They talk a little bit about the basics and then they go into a deep dive on what actually is how the QR code is actually made up, you know, what the different areas mean. Um, and really, it's a, I, it's a really in-depth article. I didn't get to finish the whole thing this morning. I read about half of it and I had to, uh, you know, just time, ran out of time. But uh, in any case, you can see here as I'm scrolling through it, really, really deep dive on QR codes. And it talks about too, like if the QR code's damaged, you typically can still read it depending on where the damage is, um, because there's some redundancy in the labels. So um, I thought it was an excellent, excellent article. Any of you who are doing labeling or, lab, you know, code reading, definitely bookmark this article. From there, we go over to a video blog from Software Toolbox on integrating with InfluxDBs. Now, if you're not using their OPC router or InfluxDBs, you're probably not going to be interested in this one. But I did think they did a good job. I don't have either, so... Um, but I did uh, skip through the video. It looked like it was very easy to understand what they were doing and how they were mapping either from the OPC router to InfluxDB or vice versa. So uh, kudos to them on a great tutorial video and article. And, uh, and I wanted to share that, guy, that with you guys. Uh, from there, um, a very interesting article from OnLogic. Now, this talks about how um, um, or what is called human-in-the-loop machine learning. And uh, so for anybody following machine learning or AI, definitely this is a good read. I really like their approach here. So they kind of explain what it is, you know, in layman's terms. And then they start giving you examples of the human in the loop um, piece of it. And, um, you know, what you find out in this article is we've all been doing this. We've all been inputting data into algor algorithms since... Uh, since the internet came up, right? So whenever you review something or whenever you give something a thumbs up or, you know, the, 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 um, the recommendation engine in those services, that's an algorithm that's actually taking your feedback, comparing you to other people with the same feedback. And so you're the human in the loop in those systems. And so it's very interesting. And I think, you know, have, having watched some of the, uh, you know, Elon Musk, uh, you know, self-driving car uh, AI training videos from a couple years ago where they really go into the details on how they you know give the give the system millions of pictures and ask it to determine what the right action is and then then it always doesn't pick the right action so they have to teach it no that's the wrong action this is the right action and it builds this huge database right of what the right and wrong is and they try to put that into silicone into firmware right and uh in any case um I really thought this was a great article from OnLogic and about machine learning and about the human in the loop. So definitely bookmark that if you're following that topic. Uh, as far as updates, okay, let's see what's new here. We got uh, uh, a new download from Siemens. It's the complete package for CyProtect 5, device drivers, online help, and manuals. Okay, and they, it looks like it's version 9.6. Uh, from there, we also have the... Uh, uh, Download for the Cynec NMS, not No Man's Sky, NMS V2.0. So that was a gaming joke. Um, so uh, if you're using that, Cynec NMS, let's say that five times fast, then um, version two is out. From there, we go over to uh, a new uh, BIOS for the Cymatic ET200 SP Open Controller, the 1515 SPPC. So that's now available. 
And there were several new manuals up on their uh, publication website for the Ray Roll 7SR10 hardware. With that, we now are in our other science and technology section. And I thought today I would share this article with you. IEEE Spectrum had a great article about the secret success of NVIDIA's AI. Now, it's debatable whether NVIDIA is the leader in this market or just one of the leaders, right? But in any case, after you get through the kind of the opening paragraph, which is kind of flowery, they really get into how NVIDIA is taking new approaches to get their AI uh, computations to be faster and faster and faster. Some 16, 20, I think it was 28 times faster in the latest generation. And I thought this was really interesting because it really talks about things that we do, right? So what one of the things they found was that they didn't need 32-bit floating point for everything. They were using 32-bit floating point for everything, right? And they found that they, some operations would go much faster if they just used like 16-bit floating point, right? Or even 8-bit floating point. So that was one part of the article I thought was very interesting. Another part was um, um, instead of having to uh, process uh, a, a request through several different instructions, they created some new advanced instructions, right? To, so they could get that uh, result within a single clock cycle, right? So you can think about how, uh, you know, program, programmable controller manufacturers have done that over the years. You know, instead of having to have a count up and a count down, this is probably the simplest example, but instead of having to have a count up counter and a count down counter, you know, a lot of uh, programmable controllers out there have count up down counters, right? So, you know, you have one instruction that replaces two and you can take it, you know, to the nth degree, like a compute instruction or a PID instruction or even add-on instructions where you can make your own, right? Or function blocks, right? So uh, I thought this was an interesting article and I wanted to share it with you guys in our other science and technology section. And with that, if you think I missed any news from today about industrial automation or other cool stuff, please feel free to submit them using our news tip link. And I also created a new one. I don't have the page up here, but it's called TalkBack. If you want to tell me your thoughts on something, you can use the automationblog.com forward slash TalkBack to send feedback in. So you don't have to use the news tip form anymore. Um, from there, I just want to thank our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. Uh, they're the ones who make this show possible. They keep the lights on. And so just if you know anybody who needs PLC, HMI, or SCADA training, please send them over there. I am very excited I'm actually working with two different vendors, simulation vendors, on some great stuff that I hope to be able to announce in the next month or two. But it will be for everybody in every single PLC course that's up here. And uh, I mean, we're not talking about something that costs thousands of dollars. We're not talking about something that costs hundreds of dollars. So I probably said too much already, but I'm so excited to be working with these two companies um, and in this world of simulation. And I hope to work with more too. I have a lot of contacts all throughout the simulation world because I've been doing this for 10 years. But in any case, uh, even if you bought a course when we first sold our first course nine years ago, you will be uh, able to take advantage of these new developments that are coming. So very excited about that. In any case, um, just want to remind you about our community, automation.locals.com. Thank you, everybody who's following over there. I think we're over 12, 1,200 1, followers over there, and a bunch of you guys are also buying me a cup of, one cup of coffee a month. Appreciate it. Um, I want to thank everybody who picked up a copy of one of my eBooks. I did notice I could update this. It's uh, The sale ended on 9.5, so I could update this text here. But I appreciate you guys picking up either my Control Logics or Compact Logics ebooks. Really appreciate that. I also have video collections available as well. Some people don't realize that, but you know, I have like over 10 hours of S7 videos on how to use them and first looks and all that. And that's just $9, $9.99 rather. So in any case, so over 10 hours of S7 videos you can pick up. It's just a way to support, so support our work so we can bring you more great content. Uh, from there, we also want to thank uh, anybody who's picked up a coffee cup of t-shirt. Thank you, guys. I know uh, you got to be a real geek to want some of this stuff. So I really appreciate you guys. And uh, just a reminder that um, after this live show is done, and I edit and upload it to all the other destinations, um, and now I'm doing micro blogs on like the top two, three, or four stories that I cover every morning over for the automation blog. So for the readers, we get over 30,000 regular readers over there. So I want them to have to have something that they could read if they wanted to. I'm also doing short clips. So you'll start seeing on not every platform, because some platforms make it difficult to upload multiple videos. But on many of the platforms, including on the automation blog, you'll start seeing short clips where I take out two or three stories from the show and share them separately. Like uh, I think one a great example is the new IO Link products of September. There could be some people who just want to know about that one piece and may not want to watch the whole show. So I'm doing that too. So once all that is done every morning, 
yeah, can I put anything else on my shoulders? Maybe. But uh, once that's done, then I come up here and put these links up here. So really mid-morning, all the links will be up here and in the order in which I cover them. So with that, I just want to thank you all for watching today. Don't forget theautomationblog.com forward slash talkback. That you can now send your feedback using that form. And uh, it's just for feedback. It's, you don't, it doesn't have the same fields as the uh, submit news field. And just you can say anything you want. Let me know. Let me know what you're thinking, and uh, we'll try to read them out on the on the uh, on the show as they come in. But with that, I want to wish you all an awesome week. And it's Friday, so what? Seven more hours to go if you're on the East Coast, right? Maybe eight and eight more hours. Um, but uh, happy Friday, everyone! I'm excited. I'm going camping tonight. So come 4:30 after my last meeting, I'm going to be packing up and heading up to the campground. So I hope you have an awesome Friday. I hope you have an awesome weekend. And I want to wish you a very safe, healthy, and happy day. And until next time, my friends, peace.